A little while ago, Bruce from the XChat and RC Model Reviews YouTube channel designed and built a small foam airplane with the goal to stay under 250 grams. Bruce was so kind to share the rough measurements with us and we took those measurements and went into a CAD program, OpenSCAD, and recreated it. We made a couple of alterations. The fuselage is a slide-on fuselage. It's slightly larger to accommodate a free S1300 battery. And we also made sure that there are only straight cuts necessary to make it the simplest possible build. The foam we are using is a polystyrene foam sold as 5mm thickness at the local craft shop. The foam actually measures 5.8mm and it's important to take this difference into account in the CAD model. If your foam measures differently than this, please uh, adjust the settings. The CAD model is available on Thingiverse. See the link for the video description. Most of the parts of the airplane are simple rectangles, so there is no need to print out a plan. For a few parts though, a template is very helpful as it speeds up the cutting process. For example, the size of the fuselage with the slots for the wings and uh, the vertical stabilizer. Also, the cutout for the propeller and the motor in the wing makes it much easier to cut with a template. Next step is cutting out the ailerons and the elevator and beveling the edge so that we get a moving control surface. We then secure the control surfaces on the bevel side, on the bottom basically, with a bit of masking tape. Then we, on the top side where the hinge tape is applied, we first prepare the area with a thin film of Uhu Pore that makes the Blender M, which is a very flexible tape, stick very well and uh, provide a very long lasting yet very easy to move hinge. After we finish the control surface hinge, we can glue on the KF steps on the wing. Because the foam we are using is actually a little bit bent, we opted to put a carbon strip 3 by 1 mm into the wing to keep it flat. Next up is the fuselage. The sides get glued on the bottom and we're using a 3D printed motor mount as a spacer to ensure that later the fit is perfect. When the top goes on, we can then bevel the front side. Then we glue on the, the nose bottom part, keep it flush to the front. And then the front top part of the, of the nose gets glued on with an overlap on all four sides. Finally, we can trim everything and we end up with a neat and nice fuselage. We can then test fit all the parts and it already looks like a completed airplane. The weight of the airframe parts, including motor mount, is 59 grams. The electronics we have chosen is a Emax 2204 2300 kV mini quad motor, a 5x4 props, Emax ES 9051 servos, three of them, and a 12 amp ESC. However, during the maiden flight, it turned out that the ESC is not sufficient. Even though the motor draws less than 10 amps uh, full power, uh, the ESC overheated during the flight and we have to swap it with a 20 amp ESC. The total weight of the electronics so far is 60 grams. The elevator servo we mounted underneath the elevator into the vertical stabilizer. The wing servos get glued on top of the wing just behind the KF step. The receiver is just in front of the motor mount. The aileron servos, the cable need to be shortened quite a bit, but the elevator servo we need to extend the cable so that it fits and reaches the receiver. After this has been done, we test the servos thoroughly to ensure that our modifications to the servos has not caused any damage. The control linkage is made out of 0.8mm wires. We are using 3D printed uh, control horns, but of course you can use off-the-shelf ones or plywood ones or uh, card ones. There are many possibilities. We put the servo center on the, on the center position to keep the servos in their zero position. And then we glue on the servos, keeping weights on the servos as well as on the ailerons. So everything lies up perfectly when the servo is in zero position. 
We proceed similarly for the elevator servo. Here the control rod has a, a wavy bend, a V-shaped bend, which allows us to adjust the zero position if necessary by simply bending the wire. The motor gets mounted on the motor mount and directly soldered onto the ESC because every connector would add space, which we don't have much in this airplane, and also uh, has the disadvantage that the weight is increased. We can then glue in the motor mount and we are now basically having a complete airplane after we glued the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer on. So at this point in time, we checked the CG as it is by putting the battery on and we found that the nose fuselage is too short for the battery we are using. We would have to move the battery too much forward uh, to, to allow us to reach the CG of uh, uh, 24 to 36 millimeters according to a program. We chosen our CG as 32 millimeters and it worked out quite well in the maiden flight. Anyway, in order to accommodate our larger battery, we made a battery tray. Uh, this battery tray is on the bottom of the wing and the battery cable sits basically on top of the battery tray going underneath the tray to the ESC. We made the tray slightly longer by about 10 mm or two foam thicknesses so that we have a little bit of adjustment room in case we have to move the CG further forward. During the maiden flight it turned out that the CG is already perfect. So if you're building this plane you can basically make the battery tray and the fuselage uh, about 10 mm shorter and save uh, weight and, and space. And here you have the completed airplane ready for some decoration. The antenna mount caused us a little bit of headache at first, but we pre 3D printed a small clip that we stuck on top of the fuselage. The decoration was done in the spirit of the whole airplane, namely very simple by just applying a few strips of colored packing tape. Rectangular shapes only for easy cutting and applying. And there we have a completed airplane. It's very small and easy to transport. The all up weight is now including battery 244 grams. The airframe without battery is 134 grams. This includes all the electronics except the battery. So the maiden flight was a breeze. It was really surprising. Three quarters of the power, a toss and off it went straight as an arrow. No trim needed, it was very easy to fly. The flying experience is very good. You can really slowly cruise the airplane around. It's very maneuverable. I think it only has uh, two downsides. Uh, first of all, the elevator authority when you're flying slow is very weird. I believe that uh, the elevator is actually stalling and you don't have much authority when you're flying at very slow speeds. But uh, to overcome this, all you have to do is simply ramp up the power and then the elevator kicks in and uh, you can get out of the messy situation close to ground. The other problem is the noise of the airplane. With the prop in the center of the wing, it is really very loud. 2300 kV and the 5.4 prop, that doesn't help. But still, it is absolutely worth building this airplane. It's a great little park flyer for small spaces. It is easy to fly, it takes less than a day to build and it's just a great overall design. But don't take my word for it, listen to an expert. Okay, the plane overheated, but how was your flying experience? Stable, very stable, smooth and it almost flies to exact height, never up, never down. Uh huh. Is it easy to fly or hard to very fly? Very easy. Very easy as in? You, as long as you know what you're doing, it just stays at the correct height. Mm -hmm. And how about turning? Turning you have to pull up a lot, definitely, yeah. but it's normal for back and neck. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you fly the corner with the elevator. Huh? Yes. Is it fun to fly? Very. Yeah. Did Bruce did a good job? Definitely. Thank you, Bruce. Thumbs up.